Oh, really? Just like right now? <laughs> oh, the irony. beginning um first of all regardless of uh how intimate or how uh grandiose uh, the conference becomes over the weekend i want to give a big amazing thank you shout out to lisa allen the president of the montana chapter of the ncgr <laughs> because within a single year she returned to Montana, she whipped this whole organization into shape, started a chapter, called everybody, da 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 has been in contact with thousands of people. It's shocking that there's us 12 or however many there are because really Lisa's been connected to you know, exponentially more people than that. And it's an incredible job that she's done. If she hadn't come and arrived in Montana, this um, level of, of, or this chapter of this, amazingly credible organization wouldn't be here yet. So, praise goodness, Yahoo! <laughs> thank you. Um, and it's a lot of work, so uh, bless her soul and, and thank you, and, and in a few days when the sun goes into her fourth house, then she can take a break. <laughs> awesome, all right. Well, my name is Melissa Mooncat. I have um, Cat Over the Moon Astrology as my uh, my title, which is where my moon cat came from, from Cat Over the Moon. Um, and I have been a professional astrologer for 10 years now, almost, a few months shy of 10 years, which is so exciting. Um, and studying astrology since 1986 is when I first had the door open to me and, uh, um, and moving forward from there. But before, well, what I wanted to talk about tonight is the, the reader-client. Uh, interaction, which I feel is so vitally important. But before I get to actually that phase, I'm going to preface this with just a little bit of um, uh, background, uh, just a touch. And that is, um, prior to when I got involved in astrology, I was already kind of leaning towards broader-minded open thinking. And I found myself at Montana State University in Bozeman getting a degree in philosophy. Did I like run in as a freshman and say, philosophy, I'm going to be a philosopher. No, I just ended up there because they had the coolest classes. And by the end of the line, that's what I had the most credits in. So I'm like, OK, philosophy degree it is. <laughs> exactly. Um, but in one of those classes, I came across this concept by a um, uh, uh, philosopher named Edmund Husserl, who described a concept called the noemata. And the noemata basically is described as it's a screen or a filter that the self puts in front of or, or that the self interprets or filters through all of its inputting information. And so basically it's like a filter of the self. And every single one of us as individuals with our own noemata working, uh, we would all, even though we're all experiencing this moment right here, right now in this room, we're all interpreting it or experiencing it differently because what this filter is, is it's all of our prior experiences. It's all of our prior knowledge. It's all of our stuff that's brought us to this moment um, to where we can, um, uh, all, all of the things that we've learned in the past that's brought us to this moment that help inform the information that we have the moment that we get here, if that makes sense. Um, so by combining the two philosophies together, so that's the, the idea of the noemata, it's a filter of the soul, a filter of your own personal experiences that filters you and filters your reaction to the world around you or to other people. Well, if we put that in astrology language, tie the two philosophies together, I would compare the idea of the noemata to knowing your own chart. Because your own chart is uh, astrologically is the answer to who you are and how you approach the world. And basically, if you know that chart, if you know your own answer, that would be similar to knowing that filter, understanding that filter. Because how we approach the world uh, depends, and it vastly varies from person to person to person, depending on you know what your Mercury sign is, what your Venus sign is, what your Mars sign is, whatever. It's a very individual uh, process or a very individual knowledge. And if the self, if the individual is aware of what their answers are, they can go forth being that much more informed because you know what, how your filter is accessing itself. 
So that's my premise, that the, that the noimata is similar to or is basically uh, like being familiar with your own chart. But if we run with this idea, if we run with this idea, um, the next layer is uh, taking us into uh, the interpersonal interaction between the client and the reader. Now this is another thing I'm excited about in an astrology conference because for the most part, people in this room speak the same language, yahoo! <laughs> so we know what we're saying, we know what we're talking about, and we understand those deeper levels that go so much further than just your sun sign and introducing yourself with that point. I'm a Sagittarius and, and some people would be all perked up and other people would be like, you know, but that doesn't say anything about you. <laughs> oh yeah, tell me your rising sign, that's what I want to know. Um, anyway, uh, approaching uh, the, the client and reader interaction, um, each and every one of us, as people who understand or know or utilize the language of astrology, um, we all would have a different interpretation of a single person's chart because we're coming into that interpretation using, again, that idea of the noimata, using our own self, using our own uh, experiences and interaction and our own influences uh, to kind of inform our decisions of how we interpret what's in front of us. So a client can walk in this room and uh, how many, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. So a client can walk in this room and get nine different readings from nine different people and I guarantee you, even though we'd all be looking at the same piece of paper or the same information, the same chart, guarantee you that person would have nine very unique different interpretations of what is going on for them. So um, what I do as an astrology, and that's what I uh, wanted to bring into this as a topic, is um, I play with math. I combine the numbers. I think math is fun, and so I blend it together just to see what it's telling me. So what I do is I rely on or I use the composite chart, compositing my information with the client. Now when the client comes in, generally what I do for a reading is I look at uh, uh, the natal chart, of course, and then the current transits. I look at the moment of uh, when we're doing the reading to see what's just come into play and what's getting ready to change into a next influence. So obviously the client, regardless of my information, the client has their own timing as to what's about to happen or what has happened or where they're at. Now, how do I know how to deliver what that information is back to them? Because to them, it's like, oh, it's a circle with fancy things on it, and it's, it's, it might as well be Greek, or maybe it was Greek, or something like that. So how do I know how to deliver the proper information? Because I can just filter through my own experience, me, 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 but they're the client. They don't want to know about me, and they don't necessarily, you know, they're here to hear about themselves. And so what I do is I compare uh, the two charts, my own chart with their chart, and I do a fast comparison. I look at it and just take a quick glance. I do a, a by wheel just to see where uh, their chart affects me to see, okay, how is this person gonna affect me when they arrive or, or how, do I, how am I going to view them? And then vice versa, I do a by wheel to see where I affect them just to see where it lands. But it's that third chart, the composite, the blending of the information between the client and the reader that really gives me the information because that tells me the overall patterns. Now if, um, <clears throat> for example, if uh, a client came to me and in our composite chart, uh, we had a big string of Gemini, clearly I'm going to approach them and I'm gonna approach my interpretation of their information in a very different manner than I would if say there was um, uh, a bunch of cancer, cancer energy in our chart or a bunch of Aries energy in our chart. Depending on what that pattern is, and that pattern could be anything, it could be a block of information, it could be a house would be emphasized, it could be a well-rounded chart, it, you know, anything goes. Every, every composite is gonna be its own unique individual reading as well. But it's by looking at that reading, that comparison between the client's chart and my own chart, that triggers me. It tells me what language to use. Because if I need to approach that client in a, in a, through the intellect in a Geminian manner, I can. And, and I know to switch to that level or that language. But if I need to keep it on an emotion-based chart, say me and a client have a bunch of Pisces together, I'm gonna emphasize the psychic intuition part. Regardless of, of where, um, what, is, uh, what the transits are actually in the client's chart 
or what my trances are. It's kind of like my own inner secret is knowing that that pattern that's between the two of us that allows me to use the right language when I speak to the person outside of me, the, the client who's coming to me. Now then, the interesting thing is that it's all, uh, sometimes we have preparation time, sometimes we have hours in advance or days in advance to look at a chart and get it studied and figure it all out. But sometimes clients show up on this for the moment. And you have to just flash into that composite, take a quick peek at it, and that's all you get. You get your 10 seconds and bam, that's it. So that's why I grab out, I, I, I look at the immediate pattern that jumps out at me. If a house is emphasized or if a sign is emphasized, and that gives me my answer. Now, do I share this information with the client themselves? No. The client is here to hear about what's going on for them. They don't need to know that, you know, hey, between the two of us, we've got a bunch of Gemini, and I, you know, let me explain this to you and keep it on a rational level and, and intellectual and teaching and telling and et cetera. That's, um, that's like the unspoken part. That's like my secret that I know that information and I know to change or to formulate my own response to them because of the knowledge of that composite chart. But in terms of do I need to explain that to the client and, and bring in that answer, you know, this is why I know that I need to approach you in an intellectual way or this is why I know I need to approach you in an intuitive way or in an emotional way or whatever, um, that part of the explanation is unspoken. That part isn't necessary for the client per se to know it's for me to know, that way I know how to present or how to uh, use myself and deliver the information that they need to hear. Because not only is it, not only do they have their own natal chart affecting them, of course, uh, you know, obviously, and their own transits as the planets go around their own chart, but the fact that the two of us came together in the moment, the reader and the client, and um, just even questioning how or why did that happen? Now, when a client comes to you, clearly that's the answer. They need to be there for you and you need to be there for them and it happened and bam, it's there, it's the answer. So I like to backtrack from them. I'm a rising Scorpio, so I'm constantly going, but what does it mean? <laughs> why? <laughs> What's the innate underlying puzzle of this information? Um, uh, I like to step back a few, question, or a few steps and, and ask that question. Why or how did this person, you know, with all the choices of therapists and uh, readers and astrologers and, and local people and phone calls and phone lines and this and that, with all the choices that exist, what piece of information is it that brought this person to me right at this moment? So it's really, it's a comparison of the three. It's the, it's the reader's chart, the client's chart, and the chart of the moment. So really it's three different influences that blend into one. Now when I'm actually interacting with a client, I'm, I'm giving them or offering them or, or telling them their own chart, their own uh, natal chart, their own transits, their information, that's what they're there for. But knowing, you know, knowing uh, like where I started from, knowing my own knowing mata, knowing what my patterns are, knowing what my timing is, what my transits is, I know what to emphasize for the other person outside of myself, especially, again, looking at that composite between the two and really using that as a, um, as a, a trigger for uh, delivering the information. Now, I wasn't sure if I was going to use examples or, or what have you, but just in case, I went ahead and brought um, a sample from my own life as an astrologer, this little notebook. You see up at the top here it says ABC. Well, all of my clients, um, I've kept hard copy of their data. I had a, in the early days of my astrology uh, looking, I had a computer crash and I thought I lost all my data and I freaked out and cried and was all upset. And it ended up that it was just a computer that was sleeping for four months. And then <laughs> I just happened to plug it in one day just to see if it was going to come back to me. And it did. And I was so excited. So then I immediately printed everybody out so that I wouldn't lose them again. But anyway, one of the things that I do as, a, as an astrologer, as a reader, is I keep a hard copy of my client's charts. And uh, when I first started this practice, I just kept their natal chart on one side. And then on the flip side of the paper, um, I print out the, the composite between myself and them so that 
at a, you know, at my fingertips, I've got this record right here that I flipped through that I've got these hard copies of. Um, and then I learned as I went on later on that to, to make it even better, the front side, instead of just printing out their natal chart, I print out the natal and the transits of the moment that we meet, that we met the first time, um, which makes even more sense. But anyway, that's the, the progression of this knowledge. But um, uh, looking at these, um, uh, cross-comparing uh, cross the mathematics, blending the mathematics, and combining myself and my information with the client's information and seeing what that interaction is, therefore seeing what I need to tell them or how I need to tell them something, that's where the answer lies to, to or that's where the answer lies for knowing what that, what, what it is, knowing how. How? Well, do it like a Gemini. How? Do it like a Cancer. How? Do it like a fifth house person or something. It would show me or tell me the individual patterns for every single case, every single interaction, every single reading. And um, uh, so that's uh, definitely one of the tools that I use in terms of interacting with people that, that quick, and then like I said, having it right here at my fingertips, um, being able to flip back and forth and just see and remember and look and, um, and then basically go from there, go forward from that point. Um, now then, as we know, of course, as astrologers, not only do people carry around the imprinting of their own answer, their own chart, but events have a chart as well. And so the same information applies to that idea. Um, uh, doing a, comp a composite comparison and a by will comparison to um, my experience or anybody's experience with whatever the event is. And so uh, one of the things I looked at was the, um, the chart of uh, this, you know, ding, the beginning of this conference, um, as well as uh, the, uh, the combined comparison of um, my chart with the, uh, the beginning of the uh, Montana chapter as a whole, the May 2nd date, although even though I wasn't here for it, I was already sort of in contact with and involved, so um, I, that counts as well. <laughs> but it's another layer of, of learning and going forward, so not only looking at the client-reader interaction, but also the um, the client moment interaction and composite and comparison and the reader and moment uh, interaction and comparison and composite. So it's a very amazing tool and it just puts the answer, bam, right in front of you, clear as day. It's just awesome. I, I love it as a tool and, and um, knowing as much as I know about astrology, it makes it difficult because when you meet a new person, you want to know their answer right away and sometimes it's just not your place to like jump right in and share astrology information or maybe they don't know yet and or whatever anyway um uh that it's a it's a tool that i use to look at with everybody every person i've done a chart on i have a comparison on clients friends relatives people pets um, places because you can compare yourself to missoula as a city as well and um and it just gives that secondary level or that, that deeper level of where your answers come from that answers that big overwhelming or overall question of why? Why did we come into this moment? Well, we came into this moment so that this, whatever it tells you, this information can be emphasized and can be known and can be utilized as a tool. Because sometimes you're not explaining the information, you're acting in the information. You don't have to explain it per se. Like I said, the client doesn't want to hear about you, the reader. That's be, you know, beyond their, their time frame or beyond what they need to know. So it's all for your own, you, you meaning the reader, it's all for the reader's benefit to look at this deeper level. And it's a tool that I use. I, I figured out that I could use it or should use it many years ago and and love it to this day. <laughs> so it's a strong thing, and there's, um, and it really does help answer that um, that question of how um, a client and a reader came together. Emphasizing again, because there is so much choice. Well, maybe uh, the the client uh, composited with somebody else's chart. Maybe that you know it would give a different influence, and therefore they wouldn't get the same information as they would by going to a different reader. So it's really specific 
um, clearly, because every interaction, every relationship has its own answer. Um, I, again, knowing astrology, sometimes I get overwhelmed with that because I think about, especially when you're in crowded places, airports or, or train stations or whatever, um, and you think that every single human being out there has their own unique answer, their own unique set of timing of what is happening in their life. And when you think about that, sometimes it's just like, whoa, and it's really, <laughs> it really takes you and uh, uh, it makes you feel small and big at the same time, knowing that there's that much information, and that much, that much uniqueness between all of this flow of humanity that's, that's experiencing a similar moment. Even though we're all experiencing the similar moment, how we experience it is very individual is very unique compared to where each one of us is coming from. And then when we look at the blending between the two, that gives that further answer, the answer of the what, the answer of the how, and the answer of the why. <sighs> Question. I, just, I thought of something while you were talking. Please. Oh my god. Um, this was a comparison between two different people, not with me. Uh -huh. I saw that like between the two people, they were almost really similar. They had the same struggles. They had the same kind of psychological makeup, a little bit of, you know, you could see like if there was issues with male energy or something mm -hmm. like that, that it was laid out in them. And then these two people got together and, and when we did a composite, it made like a perfect star of David. Oh, wow. It was crazy. And so I know what you mean by the composite. It's almost like that's their own harmonic concordance. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no <laughs> doubt. It was, it was cool. And, and it's... The other thing I thought about is um, when you look at your um, own chart and you have, like, say you have a square or something or an opposition, even mm -hmm. more so like it, and then if that person has a conjunction, that makes a square in the composite. Oh, right. And if the, a planet is involved, like, say, Venus is involved with that, maybe saying square Neptune and you have... Venus conjunct Neptune, and they have Venus opposite Neptune, and it's a relationship question. Oh, right. <laughs> this might be confusing. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So you could probably get a lot of clues from the composite. Very much so, yeah. very much so. And then, um, I mean, just everything that I've been talking about, using that example, if you were to composite your chart with each of theirs, or even composite your chart, I don't know if you can do this, but composite your chart with their composite, just to see what that further yeah. layer of information yeah. is about, and that would give you even more insight as to yeah. as to what's happening. But yeah, yeah. God bless them. I love composites. <laughs> Blend yeah. those numbers. Go, go, go. Well, it's everyone's meeting halfway. Right. What it is. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Sorry. I was getting out of what you were saying that mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of a useful way to kind of approach the person on a more Exactly. Be receptive to what you're saying. Exactly, because it tells you what language they need to hear it in. Right. And and using the example that I gave was if if there's a Gemini configuration in our composite, I'm gonna be much more succinct and and intellectual and question answering with the information that I'm giving, versus if it was if if our composite showed a big string of Pisces, if it showed a big string of Pisces, I'd just go. <laughs> Do you hear me now? <laughs> and then they'll get it, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I'd emphasize the psychic energy. Even if, even if as individuals, like as individuals, I've only got a tiny piece of Pisces in my chart, Chiron's and Pisces. And like, for example, if somebody else, like let's say their chart is all Earth. Maybe they have a bunch of Taurus or a bunch of, of Capricorn or something like that. But somehow when we blend our charts, if, um, if Pisces came out on the rising, how I would interact with them would be very different than if I just approached them to tell them all about their Taurus and Capricorn stuff, their Earth stuff. Knowing that I need to approach the delivering of their earthy information through the intuitive, emotional, ephemeral, spiritual, mystical, through that language or through that guy. So knowing that answer is going to completely change how I approach that interpretation and how they receive that interpretation. Because maybe that's it. Like, I mean, actually, that's a good example to use. Say somebody's overwhelmed by earth signs, and um, even though 
my chart as a reader, I've got water and fire, and well, and earth, I guess, Capricorn's my moon. But say the, the blending came up uh, with, a, with a whole flow of water, that would, um, that would really influence how I even, uh, how I interpret what their earth means, because I would interpret it with uh, kid gloves, as it were, emotional sensitivity, because of the Pisces on the rise between the two of us, for example. So it's an it's a amazing, valuable tool for informing the moment of the interaction itself, the moment of the reading. And it's a tool that I use and I, by golly, recommend it to everybody because I love to play with numbers. <laughs> and that's what it is. The composite takes the exact numeric measurements of your, your planets and finds the midpoints of, of the information with the client's same planet. So it's like taking the midpoint of this Jupiter's over here and that Jupiter's over there and together they're here. And, um, and it's, it's the, so it's basically fun with math. It's adding and averaging. <laughs> so Yahoo math. You know, I was thinking about what you said. I have done when I've ta taken a wedding date, like mm -hmm. I do it, you guys do electional astrology in any of you? Okay. When you choose a wedding date that is good, you know, like by all the rules quoted in the book. Right. But it still has to have an element where it fits each client. So I will run a composite with each person to see how with that the wedding date, date yeah, with the them. event. Mm -hmm. But I never thought of like running it for like how 9/11 affected you, or oh. you know. I mean, there's I I didn't even think of that. I automatically think of it with relationships, but I, you know, you're right. Well, we have any event with everything. Mm -hmm. And oh, even, huh. even this, um, even this conference, for example, I actually have that printed right <laughs> here. So, I'll just whip it out. Um, Maybe we should run it for eight o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's not quite exactly accurate, but it's sort of close to being accurate. Well, um, yeah. we set it for seven. So right. Be right. Um, but for example, oh, that piles upside down. I wonder it doesn't make any sense. Um, looking at the comparison between myself as the deliverer of the information and this event in and of itself, um, I, first I bi-wheeled the two, so, which basically is the same as saying the transits of this moment since this event is happening now. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the things that's, uh, um, that's, oh, one of the things I did notice actually is that we're in the final last two days, hurrah, of the sun being in Leo. So. We're kind of speaking it out and letting it shine and showing it, and then as soon as the conference is over, then we all get to go to work Back because to work. it'll be Virgo. <laughs> <laughs> so that did leap out at me. Um, well. But in the moment, I thought that was, this is interesting too because here I am again explaining my philosophy, so to speak, um, and there's a, a cross-quarter of, of Jupiter happening. Just in the last couple days, Mercury retrograded backwards across my Jupiter and Mars went forward across my Jupiter and essentially Mars and and, and uh, Mercury are still conjoined within three and a half degrees so they're still sort of together even now um, but that's both of those are triggering the Jupiter within me and then Jupiter in this moment is happens to be transiting the Pluto within me so both Jupiter in action and Jupiter within are being affected by this conference so, using that, you know, trigger knowledge, let's look at the composite. That's the event. There it is. The composite, let's see what's happening with Jupiter. Oh, look at that. The composite between this, uh, uh, this lecture and my own chart puts Uranus, the astrology planet, right on the, right on the ascendant. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? Check out this um, new idea. Yeah, and... Um, Let's see here, the composite of uh, myself as the deliverer of the lecture, and again, the moment, puts the sun and Mercury conjoined in the 10th house, public speaking, public professionalism. Here we are. So it's like, check, check. Astrology proves itself yet again, check. Um, <laughs> it puts uh, uh, both, and this is the composite I'm talking about, puts Pluto and Mars, da 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 in the 11th house, the house of Aquarius, which astrology is, you know, very much a tool of Aquarian thought and Aquarian, like, forward thinking. So that's another thing that makes sense. And uh, where was the Jupiter? Oh, oh, look at that. And Jupiter's in the 9th house. That was what I was just emphasizing is going on specifically between the timing in the transits between this event and um, uh, using my own example. 
but in the, in the composite, it puts that Jupiter right in the ninth house, the house of Jupiter. The philosopher is in the place of philosophy. <laughs> so, and yes, I have an S in my name for the Monty Pythons amongst us. <laughs> Because philosophers have to have an S somewhere in their name. <laughs> so even that makes sense. So it's a valid tool. And even though, I mean, I could sit and study this for hours and days and years. As we all know, astrology can get as deep as you want to make it, because we'll never get to the end of it, because it never stops. So from this point forward, we can study forever and still learn more, which is really also really exciting. But at the same time, sometimes we have to inform our information, because we're here right now for an hour. I don't have the next 20 years to tell you astrology, I have this 45 minutes. So I have to look at this and I have to quick grab the, you know, grab what's important. And just right there, that leaped out at me. Change the world, go fight win in the house of Aquarius, in the house of astrology, basically the house of community, with the community planet right on the ascendant. Right there, that's a, so it's very Aquarian. And it makes sense, of course, that you know this is an astrology, the, the beginning, the burst out of an astrology, um, uh, what's the word, conference, the, hello. And, and here's all this Aquarian inform information or this Aquarian laden um, aspects, right, using the tool of the, of the topic that I've just been speaking of, it's got Aquarius all over it. So, Again, it makes, it makes sense, it proves itself, it speaks its own language, it speaks its own truth. And um, click, click, I can look at this information and I can know this, or I could be you know, uninformed about it, but the interaction of the truth of that answer is still working. And if I actually rationally know it and understand it, that makes it that much stronger because then I can work it. <laughs> I can work it, I can ride the wave, I can like put my influence right in there. And that's the, the key to using the composites. You can work it. You can work the language that the client needs to hear. If they need to hear you from an intuitive, emotional place, work it. If they need to hear you from a Gemini, uh, rational, intellectual place, work it. Change your language, change your language. So, it, so it's not just me coming from my Sagittarius Scorpio Capricorn place. It's me coming from that place, but filtering it through the new layer of information that's given because of that chart, because of that comparison between the two. Which, blessed be, I love that somebody invented all this stuff. It just is fabulous to me because of it, it proves and it shows and it informs that deeper level. And, if, and that's where the effect is. You want your client to be as informed as they can be. And it's not about you, or it's not about me, the reader. It's about them. And what better way to influence them than if I click, click, know in advance what language they need me to be speaking in. Because sometimes this language can get, pretty, can get pretty lofty for some people to understand. So you've got to click it down a few notches. But if I know what level of language I need to use or can use, then I do. I use that information and come from that place of knowledge and affect that interaction even stronger. And that's what will make your client walk away smiling or crying <laughs> in a good way. Um, but uh, that's it's coming from that deeper level of, in, of being informed to the, the deeper moment of the interaction, that's what'll bring an even um, more profound experience to that client when they really absorb what all you've told them and then they go away into their own life again. So amazing stuff, amazing tools. It never ceases to just absolutely astonish me. And, um, and like I said, I, I've been studying astrology for a long time and I'm thrilled with how far I've come, but knowing that the more I study, as I'm studying, I'm also living the timing of my own answer. And that's something that we can never get away from. It doesn't matter how much we've studied, we're still living our own answer. We're still living our own timing. So, so like I said, it never ends. It, it, there's constantly some level or some information that can be known more and more and more and more. So. It just keeps going forever, so <laughs> yay. Um, and I think uh, that'll be where I conclude. Um, uh, I, I use this tool, astrology as a tool, and composites as a tool, and blending as a tool. Um, 
and I encourage and, and recommend and, um, uh, well, encourage is, I guess, the best word, that other people look to that level as well because of it, like, it, it, it informs that layer. It informs that interaction. And so that, that information, that knowledge can be carried further. And then backtracking again, and I know that I said this once before, but I'll just emphasize. Do you need to tell your client any of this? No, keep it to yourself. It's your secret um, as to why you know how to deliver the language that you're speaking to them. Let them just walk away stunned because they're like, how did you know that much about me? I love that question. Well, because it's real, because <laughs> it really works. Ta-da. <laughs> this is a surprise, I know. <laughs> but, um, but that'll make that, that client have an even deeper, even, or I feel would be an even more profound experience is if uh, the reader comes at it from that, you know, and it's, it's that simple. Like I said, I can study this for hours or I can glance at it for a second and I can say, oh, Aquarius, 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 uh, here we go. Charge, astrology night. <laughs> right. So, um, uh, well, thank you. Well, now I yeah. know why I picked you on Friday night. I just didn't know this. <laughs> <laughs> to inform the masses and start from that point. Um, so thank you all for being here. Those who made it here and traveled from other cities, welcome to Missoula. Um, yeah. Great to be here. This is the beginning of the beginning. We're, um, we're learning how to set things up. We're learning how to inform the media and how to do what we need to do. We're learning to keep away from Mercury retrograde or whatever. But this is still profound for the nine of us that are here. I think it's a very deep experience. Yes? Could you just spell that? Uh, Noemata, N-O-E-M-A-T-A. -E and Edmund Husserl is, the, if you are interested in reading some dry philosophy, that's the guy. Um, H-U-S-S-E-R-L. H-U-S-S-E-R-L. Yep, Earl. Okay. Husserl. Thank you. Husserl, yeah. And I, um, uh, yeah, my philosophy books are all still packed into my shed, so I couldn't tell you what era he was. He might have been eight, 19th century, 1800s, but... Um, but don't quote me on that one. All I remember is that I got an A on that paper. Uh, I was, I kind of cruised through my philosophy life and I was always a B plus girl, you know, occasionally my instructor would be generous and give me that A minus and by God, I got an A on that paper and I was just like, wow. I didn't even realize that I understood it, but I guess I did. And that was years before I ever started studying astrology. Wow. I was kind of, I, um, Again, a little more self-disclosure. I have Mars in uh, Aquarius in the first couple degrees. And so I have to run to keep up with my consciousness, where my consciousness wants to go. Even from when I was a little child, I knew that someday, um, well, it, back in the early days, I said I want to grow up and be a psychologist. And then I kind of honed it in. I want to be a psychic reader when I was a teenager. Um, and then when I was in my 20s was when astrology was open to me. But I was still using it in future tense. Someday. I want to be a reader someday, someday, someday. And I went to college and um, I'd had uh, my chart cast and then I had my natal reading done, but I didn't know what to do beyond that stage. So it kind of stayed there as like this sort of open door, but then it didn't go anywhere with it. And then I finished my degree and I did that whole life. All my astrology learning is, is post-college. Um, and uh, But even while I was in college, there was this glimmer of future vision. And I feel like that, that understanding of that, that whole concept of the filter, the, the Noimata soul filter, was a big dose of future vision for my own truth of where my path was going to go. And that's why I got an A on that one. Because <laughs> I did understand it, even though I didn't know it at the time. <laughs> so, um, it makes you wonder what else was, you got an A on, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I look back to that history. So, um, well, that'll be the next lecture. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so be it. Thank you all so much for being here and for waiting out the, I'm glad we did wait because you arrived and then we waited even longer so everybody got to relax and, and et cetera. But had we started at seven, you'd have missed part of what I had to say. And I'm glad you're here yeah. for all of it. Thanks for coming. So um, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, Bozeman and south of Great Falls and you're yeah. down the Bitterroot and Missoula, Missoula, Missoula and you're down the Bitterroot too. Yeah. So. We're kind of spread out in this little area. Yeah, Lee came from Texas. Blessed be. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad we're here and here we go. Yeah. Astrology conference number one. Yay. 
night, uh, the first night, complete. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yep, and we'll only exponentially get bigger and broader and more informed. So, going on from here, it's a, um, uh, what's the word? I can't think of the word. It's a, well, it's a small start, but it's gonna, the ball's rolling, so here we go. And it's really gonna expand. I have, I have, I have faith. Snow, like an yeah. Snow. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So thank you all. Judy has provided us with refreshments, so dive in. There's yummy cookies and stuff and juice and organic juice, I might add. I see that she's got the good stuff back there. And um, also thank you to um, who I assume that Anita did the Anita, organization Anita to get the space here, the yeah. Jeanette Rankin Center yeah. Library. It's a fabulous space, very glad to be here. It's for the most part centrally located, so it's easy to find and easy to get to, and, and I'm thankful that it was available and that you were here, so perfect. And Anita, by the way, this is our pre prelude. She's speaking tomorrow morning at 10.30, right here. Yep. So. Unless more people come. And then it'll move. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that would be a very, <laughs> very Mercury retrograde thing to do. So, <laughs> so we'll right. see what happens. Plan on coming here, but plan on also maybe driving somewhere else. Well, we'll the good see. news is, is, at least with my experience with having um, learning quote activities with astrology on Mercury retrograde, learning happens. Uh huh. Oh yeah. It's all the other stuff like the travel and the batteries. You know. And the, Let's well, talk about the Mercury retrograde for a second here, because as an astrologer, and as you know, since we all speak this language, um, Mercury retrograde, of course, has this horrible reputation because of it. It changes the timing of everything, and it makes people frustrated. But if you get away from that reputation and just look at it for what it is, um, I like to think of it as uh, the, the underlying truth as being the universe knows what it's doing. So if the universe says, uh-uh, don't go there, or if the universe says, not yet, the universe knows what it's doing. So trust that instead of like saying, no, 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 <laughs> if, instead of getting all upset about it, um, go with the flow. Maybe it's the universe's way of saying, take a deep breath, walk to the park, look at the mountains, we're in a beautiful place, and, and, and be, accident, right? and miss the car accident. Yeah, exactly. So knowing that the universe knows what it's doing and knowing that the universe puts us all in the right place at the right time, um, it kind of takes away our need to control it. What we have to do is recognize that we don't have to control it, recognize that we have the freedom to go ahead and turn down a different street that we've never driven down before because, you know, you're not going to get lost. Where am I? I'm on Earth. I'm in Missoula. You know, I know where I'm at. Even if you've never been on that block, you're still safe. <laughs> you know, it's still okay. Um, and so what I've noticed with Mercury retrograde times is removing my own ego, or you know, sometimes, because sometimes my ego does get in there, and that's when I do experience frustration, which is what today was. Yesterday was absolute flow. Was it today? No, it was the other way around. Yesterday was the weird day, and the day before that was absolute flow. So that's what it was. Um, but uh, removing that value judgment, that judgment of, ah, it's always bad, um, I have found that if I, pay if I relax and pay attention to the will of the universe, Mercury retrograde times just absolutely slingshot me forward. Absolutely. I just have to stop holding onto the railing, is what I have to, I have to let go of the railing and, and go. Um, and it's the, um, it's when Mercury goes direct again, that's when uh, my footing gets all um, unsure. But during Mercury retrograde, I keep my plans loose and I jump on the flow of whatever is suggested. And as astrologers, knowing what these patterns are, we can again use those patterns and put ourselves right in the current and woo, away we go. So I find Mercury retrograde, even though you know a lot of people aren't here yet, or maybe they haven't read the article, the wonderful article in the Independent, and they're all, you know, they're going to read it Saturday morning, and they're going to say, "No, I missed it last night," <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> yeah, <"Dow." laughs> um, but that's okay because be here now, we're here, um, and uh, information, truth is shared, and uh, astrology as a truth, and. And we're all absorbing it. It's all good. So thanks for being here. It's yeah. all good. Well, we're all supposed to be here. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. great. Go forth into the world and have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mary.
Moonkat. That was wonderful. Awesome. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. <sighs>